All right, Coach, it's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. Just a short time ago, these Philly fans in full roar as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. Pyrotechnics ablaze. They're set to go as their Eagles will match up. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line with Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. Prescott looks to throw on first. Connects here with the tight end, Blake Jarwin. And even 20 yards and a first down on the game's very first play. Dak Prescott last year against Philly. Boy, biggest game of his career passing yardage-wise. 455 yards, three touchdowns, and a 29-23 December victory over the Eagles. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Well, the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Used to have a coach just tell us all the time, those scouting reports aren't just to use up paper, guys. Well, nowadays, you know, we're watching a computer screen, right? They scouted this team very well. Know that they like to use the running backs in the passing game. They covered that play successfully. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Prescott, a quick throw caught by Cooper. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. On third down, it's Prescott. And he hits Jason Witten, the tight end. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. How about this for an opening drive decision? You got fourth and short, just outside of field goal range in all likelihood. What do you do? I'm going for it. I've got to go get it right now. I want to establish a tone. It's early in the game. I want to let my offense know that I believe in them. And you know something else? I let my defense know I believe in them also by taking that gamble. If we don't get it, it's okay. You guys will cover for me. Football going back to the Eagles and Charles, this Eagles team and the Cowboys, what an interesting NFC East race this turned out to be this season. A lot of people thought it would be these two teams neck and neck. Well, they were right, but they thought the records would be a touch better. But if you keep it germane to the Eagles, what has gone right, what has gone wrong this year for them? Well, what's gone right is that they have a good culture that they battle because this season could have gone totally south for Philadelphia because they have a number of injuries. They went through some losing stretches. And the whole thing could have gotten away from them, but they hung in there and battled all the way to the end. What went wrong? Receivers. By the end of the season, they were playing with guys that were bringing up from the practice squad, signing off of other teams' practice squads. None of the starters that were expected to be their frontline guys were available down the stretch for Philadelphia and their quarterback, Carson Wentz. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. Wentz, and he connects with Ertz. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. An eagle first down there, Wentz to Ertz, and the names that end in TZ. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. This is the former Nittany Lion, the rookie Miles Sanders. And he'll get two, maybe three, up near the 37. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they were hoping... Those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. This is Howard on second down. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. The defensive line made pretty easy work of the offensive line that time. And people get tired of the cliche that the battle is won in the trenches. But it's a cliche because it's true. And how about the battle right there? One on the edge, and the ball carrier did not benefit. 
Man open, it's J.J. Ortega-Whiteside. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. A pair of first downs gives him a first and 10 up at the 44. Working from the gun, Wentz. The connection here with Nelson Aguilar. And he takes this down deep on the Cowboys' side of the field. The catch and run pays off to the tune of 35 yards. It's not a surprise when you read scouting reports and watch tape because you know he's a heck of a player. But he is so difficult to get down in the open field. They just want to get him the ball and let him do his thing. So a big play as it gets him all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. On first and 10, it's Sanders. And he's going to get this one down inside the 15. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Cowboys and Eagles, of course, such a great rivalry. Last year, the Cowboys got the better of the Eagles both times that they met with Philly coming off their Super Bowl title. But in weeks 10 and 14, it was Dallas beating Philly by a single possession. On second down now, it's Sanders. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Nine yards on the play there, and it'll set him up first and goal. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays right on the there, edge. All day, baby, all day. On first and goal, Howard. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought that's down. It, a pickup of four on first down. It'll be second and goal. When we talk about being on schedule, I think they're on schedule after that run, getting it right down there on the doorstep. Maybe even a little bit ahead because now the defense can't dictate with pressure. They're guessing about where you're going to go. I might come right back at them with the same play, the same set, and see if they can stop them. And he's in. Touchdown, Eagles. Punching it in from a yard away. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. That's one of those long drives where not only do you score, but you really tire out the defense, too. That's a great point, because now they've been on the field for a long time. Them going to the bench, trying to make adjustments, trying to figure things out. But they'll do so fatigued. Elliott good with a PAT. And it's now a 7-0 game. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Cowboys offense taking the field again here. And as you think about Dallas and where they're at right now, it seems like every week recently we're talking about the NFC East not performing well, and the Cowboys and the Eagles battling it out for a subpar record to go to the playoffs and win the division. Of course, Washington, the Giants, way out of it, below 500. But the Cowboys very much in the playoff picture. They came into the season with that Zeke saga. Woody signed. He finally signed. They get off to the 3-0 start. People were saying, are they the best team in the NFC? Maybe the best team in the NFL. Well, they've had their struggles since. And a lot of questions about Jason Garrett's future, at least around the fan base in the Metroplex. But if you look to week 15 when they blew out the Rams 44-21, maybe their most complete performance of the season. And afterwards, a lot of the folks in that area saying if they get that Dallas Cowboys team down the stretch and into the playoffs, they could make a run at things. They were looking good on second down, but now they're backed up five yards by the false start, and it's second and eight. 
After the penalty, it's Elliott. Give him eight yards there. Still a few inches to go, though, as it'll be third down at about the length of the football. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. The Eagles call on the extra defensive back here as they prepare for a stop on third down. They'll try and run for it with Elliott. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. The five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. A tough run by Ezekiel Elliott, the fourth overall pick in the 2016 draft. If you watch tape of him in college, you saw plenty of those runs because I know the highlights showed him in the open field breaking away from people, but that's how he wore down defenses. Those exact type of runs. Throwing, Prescott. Flushed out right. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. Now following the sack, they'll come up here on a second down and 12. From the shotgun, a give to Elliott. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Prescott to throw it. He's got his target. It's calm. Yeah, he is taken down deep in Philadelphia territory. Let's go, let's go. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be, because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. Watch the slant. Watch the slant. 26. Now Elliott. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. It's second and goal back to the eight-yard line now. Here's Prescott. And it's caught. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. The catch good for six yards, but now it's third and goal. Boy, you got to think that having the 37-year-old veteran Jason Witten back at tight end is going to be great for Dak Prescott for plays just like that. And you think to last year when Witten wasn't there, it was kind of a rotating carousel. They had Blake Jarwin, Jeff Swain, Rico Gathers, Dalton Schultz. But Witten back out under pressure now, and he's going to go down just inside the five-yard line. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. On now is Kai Forbath to try the field goal. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And Forbath will put this one through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. Well, that's something of a pick-me-up, and the offense certainly has struggled, but they do get the field goal before half to put three on the board. Yeah, you don't want to be shut out, but let's face it, those three points, that's not going to solve all their problems either. Forbath now to kick it away after the main field goal. This is taken at the three. 
And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went, no adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Well, they don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Here's a quick hitch route and the throw complete. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Seven yards there and a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. From the gun, it's wins. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. CD, with that incompletion, let's talk AFC playoff picture. I think you and I agree that if you put together any sort of power rankings, we'd put Baltimore number one, certainly in the AFC. But you look ahead to the playoffs getting started on January 4th. Who do you see as their main competitor for that Lamar Hunt trophy? Well, tradition and us not wanting to be wrong dictates that we say New England next. And rightly so because of the number of Lombardi trophies they've won how they've always played at this time of year. But the bottom line to me is the prime contenders right now for Baltimore, Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes has gathered together, the defense is playing better. And Buffalo really showed me something when they beat Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh on a Sunday night in week 15. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes, and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the we end zone this. for a touchback. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. Prescott on first down. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. With that incompletion, you know, Charles, one of the big storylines in the final few weeks of the season lies in the AFC South. Tennessee and Houston battling back and forth. Houston won round one, week 15, a victory in Nashville. But which of those two teams do you think has the potential to go deeper in the playoffs? Well, Tennessee just lost at home to Houston, and now we'll have to go on the road to play them again in week 17. So I would say, on the surface, you would think Houston. They have the quarterback as well in Deshaun Watson that scares everyone. But I'm picking Tennessee as the team that could go deeper because of their defense. That's really a top five defense on any given Sunday. Their ability to rush the passer, their ability to play the ball in the air. I like that Tennessee team. And I think Ryan Tannehill, the switch to him at quarterback, has really energized that club. And he's going to be taken down about a yard shy of the first at the 29. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So a challenge coming down from the booth, and that's where these challenges come from, of course, in the final two minutes of the half. Yeah, and now we're going to New York, right? That's command central for the officials. They'll talk, they'll take a look at it, communicate with the referee at the game site, and issue a final decision because they do have the final call now. So first and 10 now from the 30. Pro 
Prescott from the gun. A dump off to Elliott. Give him two yards on that play, and that'll bring up second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Second down, Prescott, and this is caught by Witten, the tight end. The Cowboys going to use their second timeout now as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Off play action to Elliott. Here's Prescott. He may try and run for this. Maybe not exactly what they had in mind, but that scramble good for six and a first down. When they watch film of this game and hand out the grade sheets, he's going to really like getting a double plus on this play. Why? He scrambles and picks up a first down. But what else does he do? Protects himself by sliding and avoiding the big hit. Double plus, big time play. That's complete to come. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. The Cowboys signal for their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Four receivers in the formation here. Three to the left, one to the right, second and three. Prescott now from the 50. And he's going to go down. They sack him back at the 42. Fletcher Cox, the former Mississippi State Bulldog, ringing the cowbell there on the sack. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So the Eagles with the lead, and they're going to get this football first as the third quarter gets underway. This will be taken in at the one. And yeah, nice work on the return as they'll start their drive on, just past the 30-yard line. Out come the Eagles now as they'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Well, the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Running with Howard. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense. First and 10. Now a fake on the give here as they try to run pass option. Now the result here, a pickup of 8. Leaves him with 2 to go on second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. 
A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. A quick pass out to Aguilar. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there? Swarming to it and not allowing that to happen. Did not let him get downfield. Wentz on the draw gives to Ajayi. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Let's go! Let's go! Nine Let's yards go! to pick up there, and it's a first down. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. Go, go. Three! Check, check. Watch it before. Watch it before. Don't get nervous. We're done. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Ward. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a second and 11. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, that's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Big stop, Big stop. Let's go. Shotgun now for Wentz. And he's got it. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. A 20-yard touchdown. And the Eagles able to push further out in front. A good sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with great dispatch. Elliott good on the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. The Cowboys offense now, they head out for their first possession of the second half. And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. They'll start the drive with Elliott. Space to maneuver at the 40. He's at the 50. Pass the 20. Oh, touchdown, Cowboys. Ezekiel Elliott. 75 yards as his guys are back within a single score. Not a whole lot to recap on that drive. Just one play, 75 yards to the house. Yeah, it's a long way to go. And remember, rarely is it a straight line 75 yards, too. Got to have a little extra in there. So whatever the final number is, a well-deserved seat on the bench, a little oxygen if he wants it as well. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete.
Forbath to send it away now following the touchdown. This fielded at the two. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go-around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll begin the drive with Howard. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Really good stop there by the end in this 4-3 defense. Yeah, not just pass rushers anymore, are they? Those guys can use their hands, control the point of attack, Mike, shed those blockers, Three. and go get those ball carriers. Come, Again, it's Howard. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Go, go. Yeah, the Cowboys hey, here hey, on third down, hey, bringing hey, in hey, an hey, extra hey, defensive hey, back. To throw, it's Wentz. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. And the punt team on now as this one sent away. Now Austin. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 Let's on go. the return. Let's and go. the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. So Prescott of the Cowboys now with a first and 10 right at the 30. Prescott now. And yeah, that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Well, let's get back to the playoff picture. We talked about the AFC. Let's look at the NFC. That race starting to come into focus. We know most of the teams, Seahawks, 49ers, Saints, and Packers all in. Vikings in good shape. How do you handicap this race? It seems like anyone can beat anyone. I think you're spot on because if you were going into the playoffs with these teams that we're going to talk about, who would you make the absolute favorite? It could be anyone, right? It could be Seattle. It could be San Francisco. It could be New Orleans. I know Minnesota's probably going to come in as a wild card. Green Bay will come in as a division champ, it looks like. But bottom line is, Dallas or Philadelphia has got to win the NFC East. And I don't know that anyone wants to go to their home field and play when they have to play in a divisional game. So when it comes, to, when you get it all together, and maybe that would be a wild card, I would guess, because they'd be the fourth team in. But when you put it all together, it is absolutely wide open about who wins the Let's NFC and represents for the Let's Lombardi Trophy. Go. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he's on to kick it away. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with a game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. And opening there on that first down run as he gets this forward for about eight or nine. That looks to be eight officially, so second and two. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. 
So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. But we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. But second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. On first and ten, here's Wentz. That's caught by the big tight end, Dallas Goddard. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. It's a gain of 13 and a first down for Philadelphia. Defensively, they're okay with that. Short little route, tackle him inbounds. Okay. All right, cliche alert. It's time for someone to make a play because they've got to have something bigger downfield. They can't just take what they give them. They've got to force it and make something big happen for them. Now wins. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The Pro Bowl tight end, Zach Ertz, the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice. Or maybe even routes versus air. Because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Nelson Aguilar, the intended receiver. And that'll make it third down. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch. Is the arm there? The leg's still there. This has been a tough game. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. Got his man. It's our Sega right side. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 35. Big hook up there, forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run-pass option. A gain of six there on first. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Again, they'll throw with Wentz. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. 23 yards, the final tally. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. <laughs> Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Now, Wentz again. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. You got to be precise with your throws, especially in this situation. You're inside the 10-yard line going into the end zone. But sometimes the emotion, the excitement, sometimes the decisions just aren't made very well because of that. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Catch is made by our Sega white side. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. Only three yards there on the completion. That'll lead to a third and goal. As big of a play as we've had in this one so far. This is third and three. He's not going to get me. Again, it's wins. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Good positioning, and it's picked off. 
Last year, Dak Prescott had three fourth quarter comebacks, and he's in search of another one right now. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. He was trying to get it to Ezekiel Elliott, but it's going to be second down. Well, these corners, I tell you, they've done excellent work all game long. They remind me of guys in the past who just said, hey, throw it out here a hundred times. Nothing good is going to happen. If you throw it in the wrong place, I'll take it the other way. They'll look to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. Amari Cooper, his intended receiver, and it's third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, now third and ten. And first things first, before you think about marching the ball down the field, you got to move the chains. You're exactly right. Got to get back into focus here. Get the first down. That's what's vital to them. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Draw play, Elliott. And he's not going to sniff the first down here. He stopped at the 25. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll bring up a fourth down. Now the Cowboys going to burn the first of their timeouts as they stop it prior to what will be an important fourth down. And down by five, they've got to go for it here on fourth down. Prescott to throw on fourth. And he's able to hook up with Michael Gallup. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. Let's go. With Cole Beasley now in Buffalo, you think that might open up some more targets for Michael Gallup. Last year as a rookie, 33 catches for the Dallas Cowboys. Prescott now, 10 of 16, throwing the football. It's first and 10. Prescott completes it to Jason Witten. And he is tackled inside the 40, not here we quite go. to here the we go. 35. Here we go. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. First down now, but that clock rolling. He's back to throw. Drops it underneath to Elliott. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Inside of a minute to go now, two timeouts left, still in pretty good shape. I think they're in excellent shape here if they use the timeouts judiciously and use the sideline as an additional timeout. Prescott urging his guys to go quickly. They need to get up and set. Back to throw. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command and make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. Back to throw. Sliding out of the pocket. He can run for it, and he will. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. And he has another first down as they'll get the ball down to the Eagles 21. The Cowboys going to use their second timeout now as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. first down the Cowboys signal for their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go Complete. Randall Cobb, the intended receiver, and it's second down. This defense so strong all afternoon long, well executed again there. This is a group that really functions well off of each other. No matter what the assignment, 
The other person fills in in the exact proper spot. They've made it very, very hard for them to find open places to throw the football. And he's got it. It's caught for a touchdown. And they have taken the lead here in the final seconds. So for those of little faith, guess what? It got done. They now have the lead with that touchdown this late in the contest. I wonder if that was a play they were holding or a play that they just knew would work from past experience. Well, I just saw it in their eyes on the sideline before starting that last drive, and they did. You're right. They got it done. Looks like they're going to be the winners. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. So they're unable to stretch it to a three-point lead. Now you got to be careful on the kickoff because the field goal obviously beats you. Definitely, and that's why they went for two. They wanted to make sure a field goal wouldn't beat them. Now they're in a position where they've got to cover well and make sure they don't get into range and put one through the posts. Forbath to send it away now following the touchdown. This is taken at his four. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. So you're right there, but obviously the clock is not your friend. How do you handle this situation? You're thinking two plays. One, to get yourself in position for the second one, whether you're able to get into field goal range or you have to try another deep pass, another Hail Mary. But you're trying to get the first one to a receiver, get out of bounds, and give yourself a chance to set things up for an easier shot at it. Let's see if they can do it. Might be easier said than done. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. Look at the clock. Everyone knows the situation. Probably time here for one final play. And we know what that play is going to be. It's got to be some sort of Hail Mary throwing it towards the end zone and hoping someone can catch it or catch it off of a tip. Think back to 2015. Didn't we see Green Bay pull that off yep, twice absolutely. in the season? Once in the regular season, once in the playoffs. So stranger things have happened. It'd be interesting to see what the defensive strategy is about who they put on the field to try and knock that ball away. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we say so long from Philly.